So it's 1935 and some German boyos are getting ready for Great Global Conflict, the sequel, when they realise that their fast armoured box with a machine gun and fast armoured box with a bigger machine gun might not do too well against the big scary allied tanks fielded by Britain and France. So the best brains in the fatherland get about designing the Panzer III, which is 100% going to be the best tank of the war. It's going to have good armour, but it originally only has one and a half centimetres of it. It's going to have a powerful gun as well, a five centimetre anti-tank gun. But the design for that doesn't actually exist yet, so you're going to have to make do with the somewhat mediocre 37mm gun instead, but don't worry, you can upgrade that later. One thing it does have going for it is the all new 3 man turret system for excellent ergonomics. Now the gunner can actually do his job without having to worry about commanding the tank. Science. Before you know it, it's 1939 and Great Global Conflict the sequel has begun, and you're invading Poland. That goes quite well for you, so you get an upgrade, an extra 15mm of armour, and a 5cm gun. However, only half of the Panzer III's actually get equipped with it, plus it's still the rather mediocre short barrel 5cm, as opposed to the high velocity long barrel version. Now it's time to invade France, and that goes swimmingly, because the Allies, despite having big scary tanks, don't really know how to use them properly and get chased off the continent, leaving most of them behind. With victory secured in the west, it's time for more upgrades, so every Panzer III gets the 5cm cannon and an extra 30mm plate of armour added onto the hull, creating a whopping 60mm of total armour. And now it's time to rest and recuperate after months of war, and PSYCH! The man up top decides it's time to invade the Soviet Union, and you're off to the east with 900 of your friends. It's a fun time killing BT-5s and T-26s until you run into T-34s and KV-1s that you can't put a dent in. Don't worry though, because the Russians haven't maintained them at all, so they are practically falling apart. Also, surprise upgrade, a new long barreled 5cm gun, finally, and a 5cm solid front plate of armour. Maybe now you will be able to compete against the risky heavy tanks. Welcome to North Africa, where you are serving under Verabu post of Erwin Rommel, and enjoying chasing Crusaders and Stuarts around the desert until the M3 Lee and M4 Sherman show up and start ruining your beachside holiday. Most of the Panzer III's in North Africa don't even have the long-barreled 5cm gun until late in the campaign and just get picked off from range by the lend vehicles. So let's go back to the main event. It's now 1942, and the invasion has stalled, and things aren't looking good for the Panzer III. High Commander stopped upgrading your gun, and have instead decided to focus on your big brother, the Panzer IV, which is capable of using the long-barreled 75mm gun. They do, however, give you shirts and side skirts to help counter anti-tank rifles, although that is now the least of your worries, with uh, up-gunned and up-armed T-34s roaming around dominating most of the tank combat. Gradually, throughout the next years, the Panzer III gets relegated to an infantry support vehicle and gets one last upgrade, the short-barreled 75mm gun, ironically the same gun that the Panzer IV started the war with. By 1945, the remaining Panzer III's were converted into Stugs, a much more capable and modern fighting vehicle. The Panzer III was the first German tank that was actually intended to fill the medium tank role of the Panzer divisions, and uh, props to it. During the invasion of France and the first months of Operation Barbarossa, it performed admirably, and could even be considered the best tank in the world in 1940 and early 41. Later on the Eastern Front, however, even though the Germans recognised the superiority of the T-34, they insisted on upgrading the existing Panzer III's and even producing new ones, when in my opinion, they should have sooner recognised the potential that the Panzer IV had for anti-tank warfare, focusing on it and ceasing production of the Panzer III altogether. The story of the Panzer III is really quite simple. It was not numerous enough to make a huge impact during the war that it was designed for in France, and it was too numerous for the war it was not designed for against the Soviet Union. It fills an awkward spot in history where I can't decide whether it wants to be a medium tank that is modern and effective, or a light tank that was left behind and outdated by the time that it went into combat in 1941 against the USSR. Thanks for watching, consider leaving a like and subscribing if you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!